How do you do, Mr. Dietrichson? I'm Walter Nett, Pacific All Risk. Pacific All what? The Pacific All Risk Insurance Company. It's about some renewals on the automobiles. I've been trying to contact your husband for the past two weeks, but he's never in his office. Is there anything I can do? The insurance ran out on the 15th. I'd hate to think of you having a smashed fender or something while you're not uh, <laughs> fully covered. Perhaps I know what you mean, Mr. Neff. I've just been taking a sun bath. No pigeons around, I hope. Uh, now, about those policies, Mr. Dietrichson, I hate to take up your time, but... Oh, that's all right. If you wait till I put something on, I'll be right down. Nettie, show Mr. Neff into the living room. Where would the living room be? In there, but they keep the liquor locked up. It's all right, I'll just carry my own keys. The living room was still stuffy from last night's cigars. The windows were closed and the sunshine coming in through the Venetian blind showed up the dust in the air. On the piano in a couple of fancy frames were Mr. Dietrichson and Lola, his daughter by his first wife. They had a bowl of those little red goldfish on the table behind the big Davenport. But to tell you the truth, Keys, I wasn't a whole lot interested in goldfish right then. Or in auto renewals or in Mr. Dietrichson and his daughter Lola. I was thinking about that dame upstairs and the way she had looked at me. And I wanted to see her again, close, without that silly staircase between us. I wasn't long, was I? Not at all, Mrs. Dietrichson. Hope I've got my face on straight. Perfect for my money. Neff is the name, isn't it? Yeah, two Fs, like in Philadelphia, if you know the story. What story? Philadelphia story. Suppose we sit down and you tell me about the insurance. My husband never tells me anything. Well, it's on your two cars, the uh, LaSalle and the Plymouth. We've been handling this insurance for Mr. Dudickson for three years, and we'd hate to see the policies lapse. It's a honey of an anklet you're wearing, Mr. Dudickson. As I was saying, uh, we'd hate to see the policies lapse. Of course, we give him 30 days. That's all we're allowed to give. I guess he's been too busy down at Long Beach in the oil fields. Couldn't I catch him at home some evening for a few minutes? I suppose so, but he's never home much before eight. That's fine with me. You're not connected with the Automobile Club, are you? No, the All Risk, Mrs. Dietrichson. Why? Somebody from the Automobile Club has been trying to get him. Do they have a better rate? If your husband's a member. No, he isn't. Well, then he'd have to join the club and pay the membership fee to start with. I never knocked the other fellow's merchandise, Mrs. Dietrichson. The Automobile Club's fine. I can do just as well for you, though. I have a very attractive policy here. Wouldn't take me two minutes to put it in front of your husband. For instance, for writing a new kind of 50% retention feature in the collision coverage. You're a smart insurance man, aren't you, Mr. Neff? Well, I've been at it 11 years. Doing pretty well? well it's a living. You handle just automobile insurance or all kinds? All kinds. Fire, earthquake, theft, public liability, group insurance, industrial stuff, and so on, right down the line. Accident insurance? Accident insurance? Sure, Mr. Dietrichson. We should tell me what's engraved on that anklet. Just my name. As, for instance? Tell us. Well, listen, I think I like that. But you're not sure. Well, I'd have to drive it around the block a couple of times. Mr. Neff, why don't you drop by tomorrow evening around 8.30? He'll be in then. Who? My husband. You were anxious to talk to him, weren't you? Yeah, I was, but uh, I'm sort of getting over the idea, if you know what I mean. There's a speed limit in this state, Mr. Neff. 45 miles an hour. How fast was I going, officer? I'd say around 90. Suppose you get down off your motorcycle and give me a ticket. Suppose I let you off with a warning this time. Suppose it doesn't take. Suppose I have to whack you over the knuckles. Suppose I bust out crying and put my head in your shoulder. Suppose you try putting it on my husband's shoulder. <laughs> 